Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I've got a wild story here out of Georgia that Matt sent me. Cop repeatedly charged innocent drivers with DUI. Innocent drivers. Uh, Randy Travis wrote this for Fox 5 Atlanta out of Commerce, Georgia. For nearly a year, the Commerce Police Department charged innocent people with driving under the influence. And these people insisted all along there was no evidence to make an arrest. One of them passed a breathalyzer test 10 times. If you count the field and in the jail, was still charged with drunk driving. Uh, Meanwhile, the officer involved in all of the arrests is on paid administrative leave while the city reviews his work. Now, they could have begun reviewing his work earlier, but they didn't. The Fox 5 I team confirmed that three DUI cases were dismissed so far, with another also dropped because the man, the officer, wrongly charged a soldier with possession of drugs after a roadside test showed a bottle of melatonin was something else. There was no other evidence of drugs in the car. When reached at his home, the officer had no comment. But the people he wrongly arrested, oh, oh, yes, they'd like to comment. One man they interviewed said, thought I was coming down here to have dinner with my friends, listen to some people sing karaoke and then go home. But apparently he had other ideas, referring to the officer. It had been more than three hours since the man says he had had any alcohol that night last April, and he'd also eaten after drinking the alcohol. The officer said the man crossed the center line as he drove away. Fox 5 I team could not confirm it because the city said the dash cam video was lost. They lost it. Oops. But it's clear watching the officer's body cam after putting a 22-year-old through a series of roadside tests uh, that he was convinced that the man was drunk. The officer says, are you sure you only had one beer and one shot? The man says, yes, sir. And the officer says, because that's not what I'm seeing. So the officer failed to put in his report something he did see. The results of the breathalyzer field test to detect alcohol. The man blew a triple zero. Zero point zero zero. No alcohol detected. Uh, And that was eight times at the scene. He had him try it again, try it again. Eight times the man blew zeros. And the officer still arrested him for drunk driving. And so the man said on, on camera, I'm about to lose my job, too. At the jail, the officer called in another officer who was certified to use the more elaborate alcohol sensor, the Intoxilizer 9000. <laughs> Sounds like something from The Simpsons. Professor Frank, the Intoxilizer 9000. You guys still using the 8000? What are you, animals? So the man blew two more times and then waited for the uh, results and then... Here's the man describing what happened next. He starts looking through the paperwork, and then he looks at me, looks over at the arresting officer, looks back at me and says, is this an effing joke? And I said, what do you mean? He says, because you blew triple zeros twice. You're not drunk. (laughs) I don't know why you're here. So the officer, who was described here, did not dispute the man's recollection of that night. So despite the fact he had now passed 10 breath tests, he was still charged with drunk driving. Now, the charges were dismissed, but the officer was never disciplined for the wrongful arrest. And uh, the man who got arrested said, well, the next week he was actually back on the road. So another example is on May 6th, the officer stopped another man heading home from work because he crossed the center line. So it turns out crossing the center line equals you are drunk in this town. And the man says that he had dropped something on the floor, bent down to pick it up, and that's when he crossed the center line. Which, by the way, don't get me wrong, crossing the center line can be a ticket. But it's a ticket like a typical driving infraction. It's not drunk driving. So the officer asked the man to take a field sobriety test. Police report said he then blew 000. And the man denied drinking or taking drugs, and the officer still charged him with DUI. He said, I just feel like you're on something. So I'm going to jail because of someone's feeling, the man said. (laughs) Charge was dismissed when the blood test came back clean. Meanwhile, this man said he had to pay $295 to a bondsman and explain to his mother why his mugshot appeared on the internet. He said, I've never been locked up in my life. And I assume he means before that day. Meanwhile, he found another guy who got a call from his niece, 
last October, who said she's being charged with driving under the influence of drugs. Now, this man who got the call is a retired cop himself, so he went to the scene and he spoke to the officers and he said, she doesn't drink, she doesn't do drugs, she just left the house. And there were no drugs in the car, but the officer determined she was impaired because he decided she failed the field test, noting in his report her eyelids had tremors throughout one of the tests. On January 8th of this year, her blood test finally came back, all clean, no drugs. The city dropped all charges, and for the first time, they placed the officer on paid leave. So they finally said, "Uh, we're going to park this guy for a little bit and figure this out. So that's when the police chief and the city attorney started reviewing all of the man's DUI cases. Now, Fox 5, the TV station, also examined them and discovered that in 2023, this man made 69 DUI arrests. That's 69. The rest of the department combined made 31. So he made twice as many arrests as all of his cohorts. No one from Commerce would sit down to answer questions on camera. In a written statement, the chief said he's also reviewing the actions and involvement of other officers to ensure compliance with departmental policy. But meanwhile, the three that they interviewed here say they each complained to the chief and others in the city shortly after those arrests, yet they say no one took their concerns seriously. Commerce called in the GBI, I'm assuming it's the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, last month, but a spokesperson told Fox they declined it because there was no obvious suggestion of a crime. The guy could just be horribly incompetent. Therefore, it's not a crime. That's the thinking. Meanwhile, one of these people involved in the story is a student pilot. So he had to get these records expunged because otherwise it would look bad when they looked up his uh, records and said, you were arrested once? What's going on there? And you might say, Steve, if he was arrested but, but the charges were dropped, won't that just make that go away? People will wonder. They'll go, wait a second. You were arrested and the charges were dismissed. Is that because you cut a plea deal? Because if you cut a plea deal and you were drinking, uh, you know, and you might say, but Steve, if it's a plea deal, it, it, would, it would show us something other than simply charges dismissed. Uh, it depends. It depends on who's keeping the records and how the records are kept. You don't want an arrest on your record if you can avoid it. Let's just put it that way. Meanwhile, it's unclear whether the others still have wrongful DUI arrests on their records that would show up in a background check making this officer's bad decisions last far longer than a single night. And meanwhile, one of the guys said, if you have an officer continuously making false arrests that doesn't just reflect badly on the officer, it reflects badly on the whole department, and then obviously cops as a whole. So I've done a lot of drunk driving cases in my life, not as a defendant, but as an attorney. (laughs) And uh, I have to make that clear. I don't do them anymore, but I used to do them all the time. Very, very familiar with the whole process. I've read more police reports involving drunk driving than I'd care to admit, but I've read quite a few of them. I've never had a client blow zeros. Never, never. Uh, So all the clients I had blew above whatever the threshold was at the time, and it's changed, believe it or not, while I've been an attorney, because I've been an attorney now for 32 years. And so the typical process is, at the side of the road, they ask you to partake in field sobriety tests. They ask you to do some basic things. Heel to toe, heel to toe, count backwards, close your eyes, put your head back and touch your nose, things like that. And supposedly, a trained officer can watch that and see if you show signs of intoxication. And then, if they think they do that and they say that, they will then ask you to take a preliminary breath test at the roadside with a little handheld unit. The little handheld unit is not as accurate as the one at the police station. But if you blow the PBT and it's above a certain limit, they can then use that as probable cause to arrest you and bring you to the station and have you blow on the more expensive Intoxilizer 9000. (laughs) And then if that shows that you're above the limit, then they got the evidence they can use against you. Creates all kinds of presumptions in most courts. Very, very hard to fight. And so... When you're at the roadside, let's admit this. It's just time that people just admitted this. That doing this stuff about touching your nose with your eyes closed and heel to toe, heel to toe, and counting backwards from 38, all this stuff. It's all so subjective that you can watch these videos on YouTube. And by the way, there's thousands of them. And you can watch it and then pause it at the end of the video and guess, and you will be wrong if you say that the person doesn't look drunk. 
because the officer will almost always go, I see signs of intoxication. All you got to do is stumble a little bit. All you got to do is hesitate on one of those numbers. All you got to do is, you know, right hand, left hand, left hand, up, up. You, you, you were a little bit above your nose there. You, you got your head back. You're at the side of the road. You're doing this at night. You might be tired. You, you might be nervous, okay? And so they'll, they can almost always say, well, I, I saw something. And it's so subjective that, so the preliminary breath test really should make or break that. Now, obviously, the preliminary breath test is not going to reveal other drugs in your system. It's just designed to look for alcohol. But when the cop says, I think you're drunk, and the PBT says, no, zeros, and then the Intoxilizer 9000 says, zeros, that's the point at which you apologize and give the guy a ride back to his car. Okay, uh, I understand his car probably got towed already, but my, 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 I'm, I'm making a point. So the weird part is I actually have known somebody who got pulled over who blew all zeros and then the officer wrote them for something else, recognizing that, oh, I can't write this as a drunk driving. Person's not drunk. They haven't got any alcohol in their system. So this is a crazy one. And what you have here is an overzealous cop who is so convinced that his hunch is equal facts that he's writing up innocent people for drunk driving. And so I've always been a big fan of statistics and data in real life. So if somebody had come along and just said, okay, we've got this police department, and there's one guy writing more than half our tickets, why is that? And how is that? Because the implication is, that either he's writing too many or the rest of the staff is writing too few. Which is it? Oh, he's charging people with blue zeros. That might be a red flag. It might be. Again, <laughs> I'm not trained in law enforcement. I've just watched it for a while, 32 years as an attorney. And so this is a problem. It's sad it took so long to get this far. And the real question is, is somebody who blew zeros and got arrested anyway, are they going to file a lawsuit? So I wouldn't be surprised if lawsuits get filed. I'd love to see what happens if they did, because this is beyond the pale, as they say. So Commerce Cop repeatedly charged innocent drivers with DUI, and many of them had the charges simply dismissed, despite the fact they now have a arrest on their records. So from Fox 5 Atlanta, Randy Travis wrote that. Matt Senate, thanks a lot. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. It always seems impossible until it's done.